friends uh, we have discussed various uh, types of rocks igneous sedimentary metamorphic the factors responsible the process of their formation their structure their texture etc and hence their properties now it's a time to understand what for they are suitable where they are useful ultimately we are concerned in delivery service to the society and we have to make use of these resources engineering the resources we serve the society now just now we have mentioned the metamorphic rocks we shall start from metamorphic rock itself among metamorphic rock gneiss and charnocates are good building stones and also sometimes a good ornamental stone good building stone when i say it is suitable for smooth carving it is suitable for a foundation masonry work polishing facing aggregate everything it's everything charnocate and gneiss among metamorphic rocks are good marble is used for flooring also for interior decoration architecture work carving and so on slate both for flooring and roofing especially in low cost in rural people still use this kind of stones for flooring purpose schist contains many useful mineral deposits although schist are not useful as a construction material but they do contain useful metals like gold copper etc we mine from those rocks quartzite is a good bedrock for we just now mentioned the hidkal dam not only that navil tirth or uh, that dam uh, malaprabha dam people also call quartzite is a bedrock so quartzite is a good rock in the dam site in the bridges sites and can be used as for masonry work it is moderately hard moderately soft easy to dress and workability is high it can be used for building construction quartzite also can be used as a ballast railway ballast no. but these are all generalization i have no specific purpose a rock is to be used for aggregate which are all the rocks i can use why i have to use the property i expect for a rock to be used as aggregate should yield angular fragments on breaking this is very important when i use this in a concrete work it should able to bind with a sand cement and this binding happens better if they have angular nature therefore any rock if it can yield breaking on breaking if yield angular fragments yes that is a good this is a important property it should be non porous non permeable what is porous a cavity is permeable if the cavities are interconnected water can move from one end to the other if i use a permeable rock in our concrete structure i have lot of aggregates which are porous water can percolate through those see page happens therefore rocks which are free from porous permeable structure suitable for aggregate heat and fire resistant we use this aggregate in construction if rocks are sensitive for heat and fire accident can happen if it is absorbing lot of heat we require a cooling effect ac etc therefore if a rock themselves do not have such property 
they are bad conductor of heat and they are resistant to fire. Such accident can also be minimized and building also cool, etc. Yes. They should adhere to cement and tar well. Purpose is they have to bind with the cement and the sand. And we use the tar in the road and cement in the construction building. The aggregate should bind with the cement and tar. It should have medium specific gravity. Suppose I have aggregate with the high density, unnecessary load develops, I have to construct G plus 3, G plus 4 apartments like then as I go higher and higher, these aggregates unnecessarily introduces a load. Dead load increases, my cost increases, my accordingly I have to design my foundation. Unnecessary dead weight introduces a problem in a structure. If rock have medium specific gravity, then it is an ideal property. So, it should be hard, it should be compact, yes, if it is soft, it cannot withstand, it should be hard, durable, I may use them in a road, they are or in the building, wherever, if they are not durable, if they are sensitive to the surrounding environment, decompose, alter, undergo modification, then that results in some weakness in our structure also. Therefore, they should not be sensitive and they should be durable. Such qualities we get in a basalt. I have mentioned different type of rock in the order of decreasing, basalt is the best aggregate, then we have the diorite, another good rock. Granite, although has all other good, but adhering properties to cement and tar is inferior compared to basalt and diorite. It is because presence of minerals. Diorite or basalt has large quantity of pyroxene minerals, feldspar minerals and they are able to adhere. Whereas, granite contain lot of quartz, quartz do not have adhering capacity that therefore, not that high, but they do adhere. Granite have high crushing strength, shearing strength, angular fragment, non-porous, medium specific, everything is fine, except the cementation well that is little less compared to basalt. Therefore, we call them second <coughs> grey vac, they grey color as the name indicates, they have a good number of dark color minerals, they have high cementation value, but their crushing strength is low. See, all other properties are good except cementation. Cementation value is a high, but crushing strength etcetera low. Thus, we have a choice. Availability matters between Rana Ben Noor and Darwad. We have plenty of greyback locally available. They use between Chitradurga and Bangalore, etc. Plenty of granite is available that is used around Belagun. They use basalt. It's all Maharashtra, etc. Availability, but with respect to property. Yes, this is the best, I see. Road aggregate, it is in all respects similar to the aggregate which we use in building, but in the road their size can be larger, can be smaller, one. Second, there is a continuous traffic load on them, they have a different property, different forces they are subjected, a little more different property we expect. Say they should should not yield or produce a dust to load under heavy traffic. We use aggregates in our uh, beam, column, slab, etc. Once we place what decided load, that is all. But whereas in case of road, heavy traffic, they should not yield to dust to the heavy traffic. Therefore, what is that expectation? In addition to all these properties, additional property we have added. 
any plutonic rock has that property unfortunately all plutonic rocks do not have equal property of cementation therefore diorite has good cementation as well the all other properties which we have mentioned diorite is good then granite friends whatever all the property i have said also required plus they should not produce a dust here that is to be added now suitable rocks are diorite here also diorite granite here also gravite here also means this more or less common property for both yes railway ballast what is that we know this is railway track below that we call sleeper this is sleeper and here all we have the rocks these are the rocks now the rocks we use here they are also aggregate small broken fragment but they have special functions to do here we have seen now and then labors here they pull this rocks pull this rock align this rock etc it means because of passage of train vibration these rock fragments may slide and may gap may develop between this and this or this and this so they have to align them frequently repair that is one important property therefore they should permit easy leveling alignment for repair two angular fragment i am not able to drag them pull them or get compacted etc difficult to align two rounded they slide easily therefore a rock which is too rounded or too angular is not good on one hand they also should should not yield therefore angular not rounded they should help easy alignment and repair they should help to transmit the pressure or vibration into the ground there are some rocks especially that angular fragment they bind so well they form hard ground like pressure is not transferred to the ground vibration develop in our train train journey not become comfortable we have traveled on in bus and train we feel train journey is comfortable because smooth no vibration that is because we have this a system and the pressure through this through this through this aggregate pass it into the ground the ground absorbs those pressure or vibration therefore this rocks which we use should permit us to transmit the pressure or vibration into the ground it should be weather resistant in a heavy rainfall area if these rocks are weakened weathered and they may produce a powder or a slug or a mud like alter then every year we have to replace them it is not possible therefore if these rocks are weather resistant excellent moderate hardness and specific gravity too hard how much quantity of rocks we require to use there that is one problem hardness otherwise it has nothing to do with it but we require huge quantity of rocks breaking quarrying from them is a problem if we have moderate hardness then it's good again a specific gravity is also moderate easy to so many actors they permit easy drainage in a heavy rainfall area konkan railway we have heard heavy rain and tracks often blocked water logged because water does not flow at all though they provide a gutter on either side because of heavy rain gutter is full it is not able to drain out all those water water should drain away how it is from the track to through this aggregate should go to ground and escape so they should able to help easy escape of water they should they should permit 
a good drainage water should able to escape. Congular fragments etc. they become bindless, no gap, water cannot escape. A moderately angular, a kind of gap we find through which water can escape. All this considering this, quartzite is one good rock, diorite is it is not that angular as basalt, this is good. Granite people use, although it is inferior, basalt people still use, Gravac use, but this is the order on recommended. First one, then like this, availability. Sandstone people do use. So, these are some of the rocks suitable. Decorative stone. I have to use the rock for decoration. What is that? I polish them, put to my wall, put to my steps or floor like this is a decorative stone. And it should look good, no? Therefore, what is that? It should take good polish. I should able to polish them and it should have attractive color. Nobody likes a dark color, unattractive color, pink one, gray one, white one, green. Yes, excellent. Therefore, the rock should have attractive color. Chemically, physically, they should be resistant. If I use the rock in my kitchen or floor, it is not chemically or physically resistant. It gets broken for the load, something fall and rock break, something difficult. At the same time, in industry especially or in a kitchen, frequently we use a lemon or something, liquid, chemicals, etc. If rocks are not resistant, the minerals present in the rock, our structure gets uh, affected, lose its attraction, color, shining, beauty, etc. Therefore, it should be chemically and physically resistant. Hard enough to take polish. There are some minerals like a diamond and corundum, too hard, we cannot polish them easily. Very soft minerals like gypsum, talc, etc., we can polish, but shining we do not get. Or often they get damaged. A rock containing minerals like quartz, felspar, neither too hard nor too soft, in between. If such minerals present, then that rock is good. They take a good polish plus shine as well. Quartz has itself has shining property. When you polish it, they look much better. Heat and fire resistant, it is true. When we are using the rock in house or etc., we do not want they to absorb heat and become warmer, uncomfortable and fire resistant, safety point up. So, they should be non-porous, non-permeable, non-porous, non-permeable. Water should not percolate through them, that way, otherwise a dampness develop, seepage occurs. So, porosity and permeability is undesirable if rock have this. Therefore, rock should not have this. Moderate specific gravity, two heavy structures, unnecessary weight, not easy to handle, etc. Free from injurious minerals. I have mentioned perhaps, if I have a rock containing a pyrite, pyrite is unstable mineral. If exposed to air, it gets oxidized, its color changes. If it gets exposed to acidic environment, it be produces sulfuric acid like mineral. Example, pyrite has composition FeS2. In the atmosphere, we have carbon dioxide. In the atmosphere, we have water. H2O, water, Fe, sorry, uh, CO2 become carbonic acid. And these can attack on mineral like FeS2. What happens? FeS2, they form FeSO4 sulfate and H2SO4, they break. H2SO4 is nothing but acid that can attack on the rocks. Therefore, they produce acid like material which can corrode our structure because of 
presence of such injurious minerals. Therefore, a rock should be free from such injurious minerals. Considering this, we rate granite as an excellent decorative stone, suitable for smooth carving, and polishing, etc. Then diorite, next dolerite, nice, marble, often, often nice become an excellent, I have quoted, but not every time, so depends on the kind, but nice has attractive beautiful color bands, more attractive often, not all nice, remember, sometimes nice become attractive, they take good polish as well as because of the beautiful bands etc. look very good. This is for decorative stone. Friends, we have to use the rock for dimensional. I have shown you the latter right, dimensional means I have to cut them into required size and like that then I have to for masonry work etc. And what is the property I expect? It should be moderately hard so that easy to dress, easy to cut into the required shape. It should be non-porous, non-permeable as everywhere, yes. Moderate specificity, yes, everywhere unnecessary weight we do not like. Cementation should be high because in the construction we put one more rock over them, one more rock. Binding between them should be good. Moderate crushing strength, they should not be too hard, too difficult to dress. Free from injurious, injurious mineral, I am using them in our wall. If I have some injurious mineral in my wall, I am leaving there radioactive mineral. If I am there, it, I am affected by radiation. Similarly, pyrite or something else. So, should be free from injurious mineral. Weather resistant, our wall, we have seen some red sandstone in this North Indian temple, palace or uh, red port. They have so many years now, we have used some rocks in some structure. You see the some structures in Badami, etc., several hundred years. And like that, they have to withstand that weather condition. Fire and heat resistant everywhere. Considering these, which are all the good rock. Yes, quartzite is one easy to dress. Moderate hard. Laterite in the coastal belt they use because of its uh, property, easy to dress. Sandstone, yes, badami sandstone, particularly we have used. Granite people use, uh, Vidhan Sauda is granite. Too hard enough to cut into required shape, does not require any maintenance. This is attractive. Diorite, still some uh, people have used, but it is a dark color, not attractive. Otherwise, it is a good dimension stone. High, it serves all our purpose, non-porous, etc. Thus, depending on the site, depending on the environment and kind of building, this is also good, this is also equally good. I give some example, I have showed you morning as well and this example is SDM Engineering College building is an example. Like this is an example of beautiful or Vijan Sauda and colored variety of quartzites are used at many places, not as them alone, lot right in the coastal belt you must have seen, etc. These are all good, yes, architectural monumental work, some special requirement I have. They should be fine grain so that they will withstand the carving easy to carve them. Therefore, if it is a coarse grained, not possible to have that kind of smooth carving. Uniform grain size it should be. Attractive color structure should look well. Weather resistant. So, that is another important because it may have to withstand the air, temperature, atmospheric agents like. Physically strong enough 
they should be hard enough strong enough like granite marble okay it is not that hard like but all other aspect satisfies sandstone just now i have said particularly they have used quartzite at places they have used many places nees they have used in monumental shown by gulai so one if soft stone is to be used then inside if we are using soft stone is also good though they are soft but they are covered inside where they are free from or no atmospheric agents can directly attack then they are also good foundation i have to use a foundation for a major structure like a dam or a small house like i which rocks what are the qualities i look for high crushing strength should be there high shear strength resistance load bearing capacity these are all required if i have to use them in a dam site they should have a moderate density high density material a foundation for masonry work also i may have to use and unnecessary weight i don't like so moderate density is good free from porosity when rocks are to be used in foundation we have said in a foundation if water percolates through this rock and occupies they build uplift pressure act counter act against the load effective load is reduced that is the many structures are stable by virtue of their density or weight if water counteracts effective weight is reduced the structure become weak therefore the foundation rock should not have porosity and permeability all types of plutonic rocks serve this purpose nees is also another good rock quartzite example around the darwad they call budnu gudda quartzite that rock is used saudati quartzite is used at many places this gokak etc beautiful these rocks are widely used in bangalore around they use granite availability yes decorative stone sorry just now i have said yes we have said yes friends we have used rocks for construction purpose we have brought from the site to this site rocks were in the ground we brought to some other location and trying to use it here for our construction but in the ground itself i have to use especially in watershed management these rocks act as a reservoirs of ground water this store water can i not take it out to serve the society and if that is the case there are certain properties i look from these rocks i expect some properties from this rock if i have to use both for ground water exploration ground water storage artificial recharge what are the properties i have to look for i have to study see one is a porosity if rocks are not porous how do they able to store water therefore the rock should be porous then only they are able to store good amount of water in them so obviously one good parameter is the porosity here you find porosity is less no porosity this is a crystalline rock igneous rock interlocking arrangement this may be metamorphic rocks compressed elongated grain see like this elongated like this but they are compacted no pore spaces in between this is moderately porous and this is say we have porosity in them therefore such rocks which have porosity in them 
is ideal for storage of water and it is easy to take out the water as well. Therefore, we look for such rocks which are porous. Now you see, this, uh, this part of the rock you see, they do not contain any porosity at all, no cavities like this. These are not porous, not able to store water. On the other end, I have this rock you see, this rock, pore spaces are there, but pore cavities are not connected. If the cavities are not connected, how do I pump out that water? They cannot come out. They themselves do not go by gravity or flow away. I cannot pump it out. Although rocks are porous, but of no, no use. I cannot make use of this. We have another rock which is not only porous, cavities are connected, water from one end to the other end to anywhere to anywhere, anywhere they can flow. And therefore, it is possible to take it out. And that property with which easily I can take out the water then it is permeable. Permeable means if the cavities are interconnected, then I am able to take out that water, drain that water. Then it is an important property of the rock that is essential, helpful for our groundwater storage. Also, wherever I have such rock, I have to look for if I have this kind of rock, I can expect presence of groundwater. In the groundwater exploration, what we do? We look for such kind of rock, rocks which are porous and permeable. How do we do? We will do it a little later. But we now look for a water not just porous enough, they should be permeable enough also. So, what do you mean by permeable? Permeable rocks, we have so much of cavity, cavities are connected, water can flow easily, water can flow easily like that. And through the aquifer, what is aquifer? Aquifer is nothing but a rock capable of storing water, capable of yielding water. It is not just store, it should be able to give out yield water. So, that rock we call aquifer. Through the aquifer, how the water flows is important. And there is one law. You must have heard Darcy's law. What is that? V, the specific discharge or velocity is proportional to K i. Sorry, it is proportional to i or equal to k i. V is proportional to i. What is i? Hydraulic gradient. If I have like this, if there is a water table like this, is water, water here, water here, there is a difference in head and therefore there is a gradient. The hydraulic gradient, head difference. Velocity of water is proportional to the hydraulic gradient or hydraulic gradient is proportional like this. If I have V is the velocity, it is proportional to hydraulic gradient with which water flows dependent on the gradient between the two points, that is all. And it varies from material to material. If I have a gradient here to here, but I have a sandstone, if in the other case, if I have a shale, the cavities are different. That means it varies from rock type to rock type and that is we call the, yes it is, uh, depends on, yes, where here K. That is 
constant for a given medium. It is also called coefficient of permeability. All rocks do not have equal cavities. Equally water can flow that easily. It varies from rock to rock depends on the size of the particle, depends on the nature of the particle, depends on the size of the opening like that. So, it all varies with the k. Therefore, that is a constant for a given medium. That is, if i changes or v changes, k is a constant, this can change. So, k is a constant. h1 and h2, if it is h1, this is a h2, then h1 minus h2 gives the gradient, hydraulic gradient and this is the distance separation, horizontal distance between the two points. This h1, h2 here, h1 height or depth or h2 height or depth, whatever you call, this is a distance h1 minus h2 gives the and then the horizontal separation. So, it depends on that. K is a constant, varies with the material. Now, it is unique for different, for sandstone, uh, shale, slate, phyllite, schist, it varies with. Now, therefore, now we will, Q is equal to quantity of water that I can discharge, I can get from an aquifer, depends on what? Q is rate of flow or discharge from a well. What is a discharge from your well we get? So, how much quantity of water I get per hour like that, etcetera, I have to define. Then, the rate of a flow or a discharge is V into A. Area is a cross section of the aquifer. If I take this as an aquifer and this is through which water is passing, this becomes the uh, cross-sectional area, then A is that cross-sectional area, Q is the amount of water I get flowing through this, that depends on Q is equal to this K for a given medium, I, this one, in other words, A, Q, I, Q and I, sorry, K and I is nothing but V and cross section area that is Q equal to V into A or Q is equal to I substitute the value of V that I have here that is K I into A. Q is the rate of flow or a discharge, A is the cross section of the aquifer. Yes. What is porosity we have defined? It is the Porosity, it is the ability to store water. Porosity just means ability to store water, that is all. But if cavities are not connected, porosity is given by Nita. We call people VO is the VO is the porosity in that given rock out of total volume of the rock it is the total weights V0, total volume of the rock is so much, therefore this gives the porosity. I have say 100 percent, sorry, so much and then 20, this gives out of so much, 20 percent is the wired space, that is meaning. So, porosity is nothing but water storing capacity, how much volume of the rock is porous. That is all. Now, it is dependent on porosity, specific yield and specific retention. Assume porous are connected, pore cavities are connected, water can flow through them. Then the question of yield arises. If cavities are not connected, no yield, forget. Water cannot flow at all. Suppose we have a rock which is porous, the cavities are connected, it is so permeable, water can flow from one end to the other end, therefore I can pump out, I can draw water. Then people say, what is the yield of your well? What do you mean by yield? 
how much water it can give out. It may have stored 1000 gallons of water aquifer, but all 1000 gallons it do not give. Only 80 gallons it may give, 50 gallons may it give. It all depends on the other nature that is when an aquifer has that all depends on the nature of the material. Suppose S y is the specific yield, what is that specific yield we shall define now and specific retention that equals to the porosity, total volume of water that are stored includes water that is possible to remove plus that still that can be present in the aquifer. So, specific yield plus specific retention equal to nitro. What is a specific yield? It is the amount of water that I can get from the aquifer. That is, if I have aquifer like this, there are so many cavities, 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 they are all interconnected, all water present in here is so much. But when I pump out, all that water do not come. Certain amount of water still present within the aquifer, because depending on the nature of the particle, we have said each particle has a surface tension force, molecular attractive force, by virtue of their attractive force still they hold certain amount of water. They do not give out all that water. That amount of water which is held in the aquifer because of this particles force, then that water we call retain each rock has specific amount of ability to hold water that is called specific retention. Now, specific yield equal to total volume of water I pump out out of the total volume of water present and expressed in terms of percentage. Suppose I have in the 80 gallon of water was present in the aquifer, 37 gallon only I have able to pump out, I express into 100, this become the specific yield. Okay. So, specific yield I get, then n minus specific yield should be specific retention. What is that? If V the total volume of water present in the saturated condition W y that is water I have pumped out then I have specific yield I get and whatever the water that is still present and that becomes a specific retention that is specific retention equal to the water held in the aquifer still out of the total volume that is expressed in, in terms of this. Friends, if that is the case, how to understand the specific yield? For example, I have this rock. How do you get its specific yield? Simple technique I suggest, take this weight of the rock in air. You know its weight? immerse this in a measure in a jar containing water say for 24 hours then what happens if the rock contains cavities water can enter into inside the rock correct therefore now again you find its weight if there is a change in weight that is because inside there were cavities, those cavities now occupied by water and therefore its weight increased. That is a simplest technique I suggest. More scientific techniques, pump test, etc., are available. If required, we shall discuss it later. This is a simple technique I follow is I immerse this in water, find its weight, difference in weight prior to its immersion in water and now 
I get the weight in difference that should correspond to the quantity of water that has entered in. I have to get the yield. How do I get? Again now I suspend this in air for another 24 hours. Whatever the water present that can drain out by themselves by virtue of gravity. Certain amount of water went away. Once again I find its weight. Now that weight is higher than that I got in, I weighed prior to its immersion, weight in air. And this weight is certainly less because certain amount of water have flown away. But this is higher than that it was first and now it gives me how much water still present. Therefore, with this I am able to find whether this rock has good yield or good retention. Friends, this yield and retentions are function of size of the opening. Clay minerals like clay bed although have high porosity 40 percent like that, that they do not yield. They are capable of storing, but they do not yield. What is the use? They have plenty of water, but they do not yield. On the other end, there is a rock like sandstone. Their porosity is just 25 percent, but they are able to yield 80 percent of the water they have stored. It means the yield is more important equally. It we should able to pump out that water. Therefore, now you see, if generalize, if I have to, now how I do? Igneous rocks in the general are poor aquifers. They do not contain porosity, permeability, not attractive. I need not worry about them. If I am an hydraulic engineer, my job is to search for a place where I get good amount of groundwater or a place where I can recharge. Igneous rocks are not at all important. Do I say like that? No friends, they themselves do not contain water, but suppose this is the ground if I have igneous rocks. Just imagine if I have some rocks here, some rocks here, some rocks here, I pour or divert the surface water to here. This water gradually percolate, 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 percolate. Because granite is not porous or permeable, they do not allow this water to flow further down and escape. And therefore, all that water gets concentrated, gets stored here. Yes, whatever the water I have deposited in this ground because of these igneous rocks, they did not go elsewhere. They did not go indefinite depth which is not possible to pump out economically. Therefore, that is not, although not able to store they help us to store here. Therefore, igneous rocks, though they themselves are not aquifers, they help the aquifer to store water. We classify the rocks into aquifer, aquiclude, aquifuse later. This is an impervious, impermeable rock indirectly help us to store water they at least store the water, they do not allow them to escape. Yes, they are equally important in our program. Then metamorphic rock like knees is similar to that. Their porosity and permeability, I am giving increasing order shifts because of their foliations, etc. parallel arrangement, they are capable to store water plus they also yield water. Schist is better. Quartzite, originally they were sandstone. Sandstone had certain amount of wide spaces. 
but because of metamorphism recrystallization those original cavities now lost drastically therefore they are not that good but better than knees still there can be some porosity whereas a schist is a better rock there is some reason for that especially under a low grade metamorphism schist is a brittle material not only by virtue of their foliation because of the brittle nature they also develop cracks fractures joints in them and they are able to store therefore they are much better than quartzite the knees this is a potential aquifer if it is a metamorphic rock terrain i have to look for this if i am given a chance here i have a marble here i have a quartzite here i have a knees here i have a schist where do i go i go to this place because i have potential rock there now if i have a sedimentary rock how do i go where do i go sedimentary rocks if it is a gravel excellent conglomerate better shale better sandstone still better sandstone and gravel more or less equal friends no i say sandstone gravel etc are good among this i rate this as the first then metamorphic rock igneous rock with respect to ability to store and i have a reason now it is sedimentary rock just i have generalized that doesn't mean that if i have a sandstone here this i have a sandstone both the sandstones are equally potential not necessary friends because if i have a sand sorry if i have a sandstone like this sandstone like this i have a sandstone like this sandstone like this now see i have the sandstone 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 sand particles sand particles sand particles sand particles sand particles say like this in this case sands are of a different sizes what is the possibility sand grains are of a different sizes if due to some disturbance ground disturbance or vibration there is a possibility the rearrangement of this particle such that between the larger particle small particles can go and occupy possibility is there my picture is not adequate i will redraw if required suppose i have this kind of rock where i have these particles of uniform size more or less we have a lot of cavities because all the particles are more or of similar size equal grain equi granular equal size the nothing can enter these cavities are preserved intact through which water can flow easily if i have a rock i have a rock i have a particles of like this obviously possibility that between the larger grains any cavity is present small sand grains if present they can occupy and they kill they destroy the porosity permeability therefore for me both are sandstone but those sandstones which have uniform grain size is more attractive than the rocks with rocks with variation in grain size another possibility this is a rounded grain these are angular grain now this is sandstone if subjected to vibration ground disturbance pressure they can get compacted such that now this this is sand grain this is a sand grain this is a sand grain this is a sand no space left in between them the sandstones get rearranged during any ground vibration their porosity can be lost 
therefore just because a rock is a porous sorry rock is a sandstone i cannot say they are equally potential their potentiality ability varies with the size of the so equal grains variation in grain size angular or rounded etc this is one second is second is if the sandstones are of different size i have a sandstone of coarse grain coarse grain this is one particle this is another particle this is another particle i have another sandstone is also again rounded only now if we calculate amount of porosity here is less compared to here we have given the example of clay finer particles very fine particles but their porosity is high no doubt porosity is high but they do not yield water because of the molecular attractive or surface tension force or whatever you call most of the water is held similarly here the larger the cavities even they have certain amount sorry i redraw here redraw here. i need a bigger this is one particle this is another particle if this is another particle then if this due to intermolecular force intermolecular attractive force intermolecular attractive force this much of any water present they do not leave out still there is a gap through that water can flow therefore generalization is that larger the particles larger gap produced and yield in spite of the intermolecular forces still there is a gap through which water can flow as the particle size reduces they come closer and closer then the though their porosity is high because water is held by surface tension or intermolecular attractive forces they do not yield what is the use they can store they do not yield therefore i have to consider not just the porosity plus yield as well friends considering these we rate sandstone highly porous conglomerate is yield the balance between us is important i rate this as the best it is in between the in terms of size in terms of porosity and yield thus friends we are now able to say which rock is good for what among sediment rock shale is not that good rock friends thank you discussed different types of rocks especially the sedimentary rocks are potential for harvesting structure watershed management looking for ground water etc even within the sedimentary rocks there are different type of rocks that grade varies even though there are sandstone within the sandstone we have different variety we have to consider them more seriously severely and study their grain size packing age couple many things friends now we have discussed how the rocks are is useful resources to the society and in our construction industry and how we can engineer them add on even the porosity permeability can be Im improved we will discuss it a little later under some other topic but how they can serve as a source good luck